It's your girl Quincy and we're live here on the red carpet for a wonderful event that's going to be honoring David Foster. He's going to be receiving the Architect of Sound Award tonight. We're going to talk to a lot of great stars. Stay tuned. David has a, a unique approach to everything that he does. If all of us could have a mentor who believed in us, saw our greatness and helped us lift ourselves up to share our gift with the world, wouldn't that be great? That's what we're doing here tonight. The job of a producer in my mind is to make the artist look as good as they possibly can. And I think David Foster has that down. We know the Grammys, we know all of the success, the hits, all the number one hits, but he's got a heart of gold. He's such a great, great human being. the architect of sound honors so special when you just have a litany of you know honors and achievements and accomplishments you you can imagine that just being connected with the grammys in any way is always great news i mean i'm thirsty for more grammys i'm hungry for more grammys i want more grammys and i like hovering around the grammys and i think that uh, neil port now has done an amazing job uh, as his uh, under his tenure the grammys has grown and the programs have grown and they do such great work all year round, you know, the public basically sees the one night of the hoopla, of the winners and the speeches and all that, but there's 364 other days that they're working tirelessly on programs and kid, you know, programs in the schools and, and um, helping musicians that can't help themselves anymore. And um, it's, a, it's a big umbrella and so it's always nice to be close to the Grammys in any way. David has a, a unique approach to everything that he does, you know. He's brilliant, but he's also I would say, in a way, um, as a young songwriter, uninhibited. I don't think David ever felt constrained to, to write a song that was simple and standard in the way that so many pop songs were. So you listen to his repertoire, particularly as a musician, it's very impressive, it's very compelling, it's very innovative. And then as a producer, the same. You know, David applies certain sounds, certain principles as a producer that have really, and, and in all cases, paying great attention to the artist involved. So it's not just about a David Foster song or production, it's how do you bring the, the best out of that artist. And for all those reasons, we're so pleased we can honor him tonight. There's a lot of musical geniuses in the world. What separates him? What, you know, what makes him unique? Well, I think just as a, First of all, as a musician, he's a world-class musician. Then that part of it probably gets overlooked. But before he was writing and before he was producing, he was just a tremendous musician. So you start with that. And I think, really, the job of a producer, in my mind, is to make the artist look as good as they possibly can. And I think David Foster has that down. Whether it's Whitney, whether it's Celine Dion, I mean, you name it, across the board, he really finds kind of the magic in each performer he works with and really brings out the best in them. So when I was a cub reporter, I went to interview him at his really beautiful spread in Malibu and I got up there and it was green lawns overlooking the ocean and all these Rottweilers around. And I was like, wow, the great David Foster said, David, this is beautiful. Like, oh, come on, Giselle, you've seen beautiful homes before. And I said, yeah, I have, but this is something. You have to remember, I come from nothing. And he says, honey, we all come from nothing. And I always remembered it. Why? Because when you see the great Celines and Josh Grobins and all the people that he sings with and produces, the star talent, you realize they are just like every one of you. They came from nothing and had a dream and some talent that he nurtured. If all of us could have a mentor who believed in us, saw our greatness and helped us lift ourselves up to share our gift with the world, wouldn't that be great? That's what we're doing here tonight. You're not just, oh, I know. You're friends with David Foster. You know, we are. <laughs> but you know, he's, and I tell the people this all the time, we know the Grammys, we know all of the success, the hits, all the number one hits, but he's got a heart of gold. He's such a great, 
great human being and I feel just so blessed to have his friendship just that alone if there was nothing else I would be blessed just to have his friendship and, I, and I'm sure he feels the same way about you plus the voice <laughs> plus the voice <laughs> So you're going to be performing tonight. I am. I am. I'm going to be uh, Whitney Houston tonight. I'm going to be uh, Tony Braxton tonight. We're going to do Unbreak My Heart. Uh, with Whitney, we're going to do the bodyguard stuff. And then Natalie Cole, we're going to do uh, Unforgettable with Reuben Studdard. So I'm really excited about that. David's an amazing producer, songwriter, performer. Um, just a great human being. I mean, I, I've been performing with him since I, since uh, 2012, and I've done numerous, numerous shows. But to be here tonight, this is just so special. As he gets uh, this wonderful award, and to be here at, at this show of all shows to honor him, uh, it's it's. Uh, I'm just humbled and grateful to be here. What's one of the things you've learned from him as a performer working with him? I've learned so many things. I mean, he's been such a great mentor and friend to me off the stage. Um, I think the, the greatest lesson that he's taught me is um, to always strive to be great. You know, there's so much in this world that, that um, kind of doesn't allow you to strive to be great. There's so many people telling you, oh, it'll be good enough, it's good enough. Just, you know, just be good. And David's message has always been be great. Strive to be great. You know, good is great's worst enemy. And, and uh, I think that's, that's a lesson I learned early on, was to really strive to just be, to be great, to focus on your, you know, on, uh, on your career and focus on your craft and just kind of shoot, shoot uh, for a really high bar. How do you feel about this event tonight? Well, we're very excited about it. We think that Dave, the honoring David Foster is long overdue. I mean, if you give it a little thought, 16 Grammys, 45 nominations? 45. That's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, you want to talk about an architect of sound, you could make a case that contemporary radio, adult contemporary radio, wouldn't exist but for all those songs he produced. So, so it's, it's very exciting. If this were baseball, David Foster would be considered a five-tool player. A five-tool player is someone who does everything really well, like great, you know, and there are all, there's not a lot of five-tool players in baseball. Mike Trout would be one of them, right? But that's what David Foster is. He does everything amazingly well. And he has the track record to prove it. There's a reason why artists line up to wanting to work with him. You know, he has that it. Um, he has incredible ears. He, he's fantastic in the recording studio. He has a very warm personality where artists relate to. So he has pretty much everything. He's pretty gifted. And, and uh, he, is, he is someone, his talents and what he has meant to popular music today is an aspiration for a Grammy Museum to, to follow him. So he, he's kind of like a, a, a mentor in a way to the Grammy Museum, not just the staff, but, but also to our mission, you know. And uh, I'm so glad that we finally got a chance to honor him. David's the most incredible person, producer, human I, I've ever met. He's offered so much to the music industry, it wouldn't be the same without him. He's discovered some of my favorite singers, and I can honestly say if, if David didn't create these iconic records and didn't, hasn't, didn't do what he did like for all of his career, these masterpieces, I wouldn't have probably picked up a microphone to sing. He's inspired me a lot. He's written, produced some of the best records. And, um, and discovered the most incredible talent. So yeah, I, I'm super excited to be here. I'm pinching myself, I'm nervous, I'm excited. That was, that was gonna be my next question. <laughs> what is, what is? Da, da, da. <laughs> no, it's just, it's, it's really like, it's a humbling moment. I Since I was a kid, you know, I was raised on Whitney Houston and Celine Dion. And those are the songs that made me want to challenge myself. And I was like, I remember I would sit in my basement and sing all by myself until I could hit every single note. And it took a while. It took a lot of practice. But I knew. Well, we've heard you sing and you perfected that thing. Girl. Thank you, thank you. But you know, to be here tonight honoring David is an incredible moment for me to be here for him. And, and, and I'm, I'm honored and humbled by it. And I'm excited. I'm so excited. Studio Q Show.